Indeed, small businesses are the backbone of our economy, and I'm talking on doing business in Nigeria and the issue of tax. Some months ago, when I, was still, when I still worked in Lagos, we had a power failure in our complex. I and a few colleagues who had a ton of work to do found our way to a cafe right next to the office that had, ne next to our office that had electricity. We sat down and were about to bite into the cakes we had ordered when a couple of people, along with some police officers, entered the cafe. They then proceeded to have a conversation with the attendant, after which one of the men from the local government ordered us out and shut down the restaurant, alleging that they hadn't paid their TV license tax. We watched as these men went to every shop and office in the complex, shutting them now one by one until they coughed up the money they claimed they owned, owned the government. I mean, I was amazed. Every day you hear small businesses complain about how the government chokes them on taxes and how they can't survive in this environment. And then the next day, like magic, the government claims it has moved up in the index of ease of doing business. I mean, who are we to believe? Infrastructure for conducting businesses such as good roads and electricity are not up to standard. So tell me, how are these businesses supposed to survive? We live in a country that till today depends on the revenue of crude oil to fund the national budget. And as a country, we hardly produce anything but consume. To the government of the day, the next best thing to fill up that deficit is to tax the people silly. However, this approach is counterproductive, and let me tell you why. To be able to tax effectively, without overburdening a segment of the population, you must have a robust identification system that consists of the details, amount of people that live in your nation and earn an income. We currently don't have that. We've had attempts by the government to try and create a system that has all the data of citizenry. For example, the Nigerian identification number, by the way, I registered for my NIN in, 2007, in 2013, and I haven't yet received my card. I hear that presently there is a Nigeria digital identity project taking place, and I hope that we'll eventually see the results of this tax cut. There you are. <laughs> Forget this is it. You, uh, it's, uh, yeah. This is Bolahan's forte. It's quite unfortunate where we have found ourselves. Um, and we are holding ourselves seriously back without a proper identification system. If I say I am Gbola Horn, I must be Gbola Horn everywhere and in everything that I do. We still don't have that very basic thing in Nigeria as such today. So you have a situation in which, who are the people that get taxed the most? You have the middle belt who are in the middle uh, class, who are in the structured work environment, so they deduct it, they don't even give you an option. Yeah. Then you have, the yeah. people that they can chase on the road and collect 500, 300, a lot of those money never entered no. anywhere. Oh, thank you. Oh, anywhere. She specifically mentioned the issue of a TV license. We, we, we discuss TV license as if we are bargaining for crayfish in the market. Mm -hmm. So you bring 10,000, say, no, I'll give you 5,000. No, it's 2,000. That is how it is done, even in Lagos. Yeah. It's just crazy. So we need to yeah. be able to move beyond all of that and create a proper environment for these businesses to thrive. We are not doing well enough. Uh, uh, um, thank you, Nef Nefisat, for also you know, bringing this up. I, I completely agree with her. That, and um, like she said, for you to tax, you first and foremost need to bring people into the tax net. net. What we are doing is drag everybody into the tax net without actually knowing who is taxable or not. And, and so you drag everybody in and then some of the money will go into private pockets. You first need to create jobs. When you create jobs, then you can now tax and generate money. When you are chasing people who are roadside sellers, you're chasing them away from the road, not to sell. And then you also now turn around, I want to tax these same people. Mm -hmm. And then when they eventually collect the taxes, you, they are unaccounted for. And so that's why you find out that you know, it is easy for people to pay tight than to pay tax. <laughs> because they go together because those basic things that government ought to provide for you, that government is not providing. Mm -hmm. The pastor comes and says, you don't need government to give you these things. You can pray down Just on bring them and God 
Key into God's promises, promises and God will give them to you. And the only way you can key in, instead of paying taxes, pay tithes. And that good husband you're looking for, <laughs> security, jobs, God will to provide travel them. Abroad to as travel abroad well. God. That's why you find out that people will cover vehicle with blood of Jesus from Lagos to Benin because they have paid tithes. <laughs> You know, so government <laughs> because instead, also, instead of paying tax of to paying make sure taxes, that the road you know, leading fixed. there is okay to make sure also that security is in, security place. Is in place, and yeah. because government also steals the money, Correct. they really don't care. Correct. But they are so good at uh, slogans. Yes, is of doing business. We have uh, reduced the time for registering a, 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 a corporation, and so we believe that once you do that, that is the ease of doing business. And my when it still takes you days, months, to clear goods that you genuinely imported into Nigeria. But if you import contraband, you clear faster because you have to settle. For me, my pet peeve in all of this is asking me to get a certificate of roadworthiness for my car when, when your road roads are not worthy. worthy. <laughs> They're not car worthy. Thank you. I don't get it. I don't know, whether, I don't know, I don't know where, which way we're drifting in this country, to be honest. Um, I, I think that um, the, the problem really, as you've said, Treasurer, you know, at the beginning, is the corruption thing, enabling it. If we cannot account for the oil money, I don't see how we're going to account for anything, anything. else. So that, that was the yeah. biggest payment we have, and we can't even account for it. We can't look after it. How are we going to look after tax or any other little thing like TV license? So or as far radio as I'm, license. Or radio also. license, yes. So all I can say is that, quite frankly, when Mr. President starts to look after the oil that we make, which is very little now and will continue to be very little from here on, that's when they should open their mouths and talk about taxes. For now, they're just, you know, this is just brigandage, basically. That's what they're doing. Well, um, talking about um, oil and um, our country, after the break, I'll be raising another topical case in point.